Dateline and NBC News. Now, more than ever. WSFA Channel 12, Montgomery. Live from Alabama's news source, this is WSFA News 12, the 10 o'clock report. With Bob Howell. Weather with Rich Thomas. And with sports, Phil Snow. Good evening, I'm Bob Howell, and this is the news for Tuesday, May 2nd. Rescue workers say that the death toll in Oklahoma is now 141. It was also a busy day in the investigation of that crime. Jim Hanchett has the latest from Oklahoma City on the arrest of two men in the case and the search for victims. He's a transient who may have followed bombing suspect Timothy McVeigh across the country from cheap motel to cheap motel. Or Gary Allen Land may have just coincidentally stumbled into a parallel path. Either way, he is in custody now as a material witness, along with his traveling companion, Robert Jacks. I could hear one of the officers yell, put your hands in the air, if you make a move, we'll blow you away. That's how an eyewitness described the dawn raid at the Kell Lake Motel in Carthage, Missouri. Land and Jacks arrested without incident. Then the bomb squad examined their car, pulled open the door with a cord, but found nothing dangerous. Land and Jax lived 200 yards from McVeigh in Kingman, Arizona. Then on the night McVeigh was arrested in Perry, Oklahoma, well, Land and Jax were there in this motel. Coincidence or co-conspirators? The FBI isn't saying. Jax and Land are cooperating with the FBI in the investigation and have agreed to be interviewed and provided consent to search their property. Another material witness, James Nichols, was also in court. The judge ruling he must remain in jail after investigators said Nichols' Michigan farm was used as a bomb testing laboratory by McVeigh. All of this leaves the suspect known as John Doe No. 2 still at large. That was Jim Hanchett reporting from Oklahoma City. The Environmental Protection Agency and the Alabama Department of Environmental Management have come up with a temporary solution to a land contamination problem in West Montgomery. Now, the plan calls for the extraction of on-site contaminated groundwater at a Superfund site. Officials say the measures are being taken to prevent any further contamination, but nearby residents believe the damage has already been done. They will extract the groundwater that's contaminated and then pump that to the Montgomery Tawasa wastewater treatment plant for ultimate uh, treatment and disposal. We're not really that much concerned about the groundwater now as we are what we've already had in the past because for 25 years my family and I we did drink uh, well water. This initial cleanup will cost an estimated $6.1 million. It'll be at least six years before the entire site is completely cleaned up. Governor Tom James is so upset with Montgomery Circuit Court Judge Gene Reese's decisions in the state school funding case that he's proposing a bill to negate what the judge did. The proposal reaffirms a provision of Alabama's Constitution that says there is, quote, no right to education or training at public expense in Alabama. Reese declared that provision unconstitutional. Now, some legislators and lawyers who have reviewed the governor's proposed constitutional amendment say it is too vague. Legislators will consider at least two bills this session designed to toughen a law that's already on the books, the state's statute that bans tobacco sales to minors. Now, one of the bills is being sponsored by Senator Wendell Mitchell, which will increase the tobacco licensing fee by $25. Plans are to give that extra money to the ABC board, which would have the responsibility of educating merchants and enforcing the law. Reaction to the proposal from local businesses is mixed. I have a 14-year-old, and uh, I would hope nobody would sell tobacco to him, you know. So I think it's a good idea to toughen up a little bit. I always believed they should have, you know, have some kind of fine for the others who try to buy a cigarette when they're underage. For the yeah. other people? Yeah, like the same way with the alcohol, you know, beverages. I don't sell that much tobacco like I used to. Um, I don't really make a lot of money off of it. As far as increasing the fee, it, it just depends how much they go up on it. I may just quit selling it altogether if it's too much. The bill also applies to stores that sell tobacco products and vending machines, but those details haven't been worked out as of yet. If a local businessman has his way, nightlife will return to the Atlanta Highway. 
in the former location of a club called Senior Frog. Steve Lander owns Bama Lanes and the building next door, which has been home to a number of nightclubs over the years. Lander ran a club called Nightlife in this location before he leased it to a company that changed the name to Senior Frog. Lander says he never had any serious problems like the ones that led to the demise of the frog, but folks who live in a development that opened after Lander's club changed hands say they don't want a bar to open in that building. Those residents will get a chance to say what they think to the city council when it holds a public hearing on whether to renew Lander's business license. That meeting is two weeks from tonight, 7 o'clock at Montgomery City Council Chambers. Well, it's time now to check in with Rich Thomas for our first look at the overnight forecast. Rich, how's it shaping up outside? Bob, in a word, chilly. We are headed for some uh, colder than normal uh, territory for this time of year. In fact, around the region right now, we're already looking at temperatures ranging well, up 50 degrees already in Birmingham, and that's early for that, uh, that temperature, and it's still going down. Overnight, the forecast looks like this. Clear and very chilly. We'll end up around 46 degrees here in the Montgomery area, which is needless to say, you know, about 10, 15 degrees below normal. And around the region tomorrow morning, no travel problems anticipated. In fact, it should be a good morning for travel, if but a cool start to the day. We'll talk about the forecast that'll take us right on through Sunday. That's coming up in just a few minutes, Bob. Uh, are we flirting with a record low temperature tonight? I think so. 46, if we get there, will be uh, tying the record. Okay, thanks, Rich. Okay. Well, coming up next, President Clinton's nominee for Surgeon General faces a tough battle in the Senate. And coming up more on the dinosaurs, Jurassic Park brought back to life. I'm Mark Strassman. Coming up, well, this is the real Jurassic Park, where you'll find more about how dinosaurs live and how they die. Worried you might have termites? Now you can call 1-800-TERMINEX to know for sure. Terminex, Terminex. Where's that number? But remember, termites will do anything to keep us away. They know Terminex is the leader in termite control and that nobody offers a better guarantee. So it's no wonder that termites are out to stop us. Call 1-800-TERMINEX now for your inspection. Nobody bugs bugs like Terminex. There is something special about owning a John Deere. You wake up a little earlier on weekends. You skip morning coffee. And you really, really hate it when it rains. From trimmers to lawn and garden tractors, your John Deere dealer has all sorts of ways to make your work more enjoyable. With thousands of John Deere dealers across the country, there's sure to be one near you. If you want all rock and roll oldies without the 50s doo-wop, you must be an arrowhead. If you want only the best rock of the 60s, 70s, and 80s without the bubble gum, you must be an arrowhead. If you want all rock and roll oldies all the time, you must be an arrowhead. All rock and roll oldies, Arrow 96.1. Closed captioning of WSFA News is brought to you by Ziegler Meats, a tradition of great taste. Tomorrow, hear firsthand what it was like to live in Vietnam during the fall of Saigon. Plus, picture perfect ways to store those precious photos. We'll see you tomorrow morning. You're watching WSFA News 12, Alabama's News Center. Will Dr. Henry Foster's nomination to be Surgeon General survive before a Senate committee? Sandy Gilmore reports President Clinton's controversial nominee is given little chance of Senate approval in the Republican-dominated body. An embattled, teary-eyed Henry Foster spoke of his humble roots of delivering thousands of babies in a long career and of his anti-pregnancy self-esteem program for teens, many of whom traveled from Tennessee in support. Responding to a firestorm of criticism, Foster said he had performed 39 legal abortions, calling his initial recollection of a much smaller number an honest mistake. But there was never any intent to deceive. I had no reason to do so. In what Democrats called a smokescreen for anti-abortion views, Republicans attacked Foster's credibility. They questioned him on a 1960s syphilis study in Tuskegee, Alabama, in which black men went intentionally untreated. It would amaze me that uh, being in a, in a small group of doctors, that if something was that controversial, 
uh, that uh, there would not uh, have been discussion about it. Tuskegee is a place where the repository of all racial lynchings that have ever occurred in this country are kept as we sit here. No one knew about that study until 1972. I was outraged then. If I had found out in 71 or 70 or 69, I would have been equally outraged. It was, it was awful. Whatever happens in committee, the nomination appears doomed in the Senate. Majority Leader Bob Dole and Phil Graham, both presidential candidates, threatened to keep it from even being considered or voted on. Sandy Gilmore, NBC News, the Capitol. Also in the nation's capital today, advocates for the elderly staged a mini-march on the Capitol, carrying a symbolic torch. Demonstrators of all ages chanted in unity to save Medicare from cuts. The marchers say an attack on Social Security and Medicare isn't just an attack on the elderly, but an attack on the young and their futures as well. In Los Angeles today, testimony trudges on in the O.J. Simpson trial. LAPD serologist Greg Matheson was testifying about the blood evidence he analyzed. One sample was a drop of blood left at the crime scene. Later, when a picture of Nicole Simpson's hand in a pool of blood was shown, O.J. Simpson broke down in tears. Meanwhile, former juror Tracy Hampton was taken to the hospital. A paramedic says the family blames media pressure. She hasn't granted any interviews. Hampton got out of jury duty yesterday at her own request. Taking a look now at news from around the state of Alabama tonight, police say that a bank customer shot and captured a man who was suspected of robbing three mobile banks. The alleged robber reportedly fled from the bank with money. Then AmSouth customer Derek Johnson entered the bank. After learning of the robbery, Johnson pursued the man, confronted him. The man jumped into some bushes and Johnson fired at the bushes, hitting the man in the leg. And then he returned him to the police at the bank. Tuscaloosa police have confirmed that the device discovered at a Tuscaloosa scrap metal yard is a World War II practice smoke grenade. Officers removed the 25-pound practice grenade, which was discovered yesterday. A spokesman for the Tuscaloosa Police Department says it may have been left over from when Tuscaloosa housed military training facilities during World War II. In the movie Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg tried to bring dinosaurs to life again. But in the real world, how dinosaurs became extinct is still one of the world's great mysteries. But there's been a good deal of recent dinosaur detective work done. Mark Strassman reports tonight on the latest findings of how the dinosaur detectives do their work. Dinosaur National Monument, near Utah's border with Colorado. But up here at the very top of the cliff in the center there, you can see one of the two skulls. Of a skeleton. This former quarry has become a window onto the world of dinosaurs, a bone jam from the past, perfectly preserved. All Jurassic. All Jurassic, about 145 million years old. So this is Jurassic Park. This is the Jurassic Park, the real Jurassic Park. This is the leg bone of an Apatosaurus, better known as a Brontosaurus. It's a fossil and a clue to a mystery millions of years in the making. That mystery is as much about how dinosaurs died as it is about how they lived. I think that extinction is something that sort of fascinates and terrifies everyone. The sun got too hot and the water dried up. A disease. Then the plants dried up and then the plant eaters died. Just climate changes, you know, the only, that, that seems the most reasonable to me. Then the meat eaters died because there wasn't a plant eater so they could eat. Sometimes it seems everyone has a pet theory why dinosaurs really went extinct. Um, I think it was probably a, a meteorite. A huge meteorite 65 million years ago figures into many mainstream theories, crashing into the Earth at 45,000 miles an hour, creating massive sound waves, catastrophic tremors, cracks in the Earth's surface. Volcanoes spewed lava and ash into the air, blocking sunlight, choking off the food supply, killing off the dinosaurs. It's obviously a global crisis of some kind. The question is, which of the, of the factors causes this global crisis? And in fact, everyone could be a bit right. Or just asking the wrong question. Forget extinction theories, says paleontologist Jack Horner. Concentrate on how dinosaurs live, not how they die. It just always seems a little odd to me that a creature that's been on Earth for four million years at the most would wonder what would hap had happened to an animal that survived for 140 million. In fact, Horner believes dinosaurs never went extinct. 
We just call them birds. You know, we could certainly would probably learn maybe something about our own future if we uh, understood more about what happened to the dinosaurs. Hope that we don't go the same way they did. Right. <laughs> From masters of the planet to a mystery of evolution stingy with its clues. At the Dinosaur National Monument in Utah, Mark Strassman for NBC News. Well, you'd think creatures that big uh, that were so dominant for so long would have no trouble gaining respect, but they do. We'll have more on that tomorrow. And by the way, you can catch the television premiere, network television premiere of Jurassic Park, uh, Sunday night, 7 o'clock here on Channel 12. A mere $50 million got NBC that package. Did you see the making of Jurassic yeah. Park the other night? Fantastic uh, special effects. I don't know how they... Well, Steven Spielberg, that's yeah, all you have to a, say. That's at, the, at the ballpark tonight, jumping back to something a little closer to home, it was nippy out there. And uh, not as cold as it's going to be first thing in the morning. You're going to need a jacket, and you may end up needing a uh, some sort of blanket tonight before you go to bed. We'll have a look at the overnight lows in just a moment. wanted a nice country vacation where you can just putter around, relax and enjoy the great outdoors, get a real close-up look at the wildlife, and just gaze at the stars. Have we got the perfect country vacation for you? In fact, folks have been singing our praises for years. Opryland USA, America's country vacation destination. For complete details on vacation packages, just give us a call. Later on The Tonight Show, Jay's got a shocker for 90210's Tory Spelling. You did a totally nude shoot. I've covered the air. Here it is right here. Let's take a look. <laughs> and wait till you see her. Plus, Naomi Judd, Pulp Fiction's Quentin Tarantino, ER's Anthony Edwards, Courtroom Chaos, and Coffee Maniacs. Followed by an all-new late night with Conan O'Brien, NBC Tonight. Now, the WSFA Storm Team's Rich Thomas. The cold front came through and brought us a few drops of rain last night, and that was about it. It was noticeably cooler this morning. A lot of clouds started us out, and it felt almost like February. Now we're looking for a uh, possibly a record-tying night. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, hi to our weather watcher, Phil Guy, up in the Holtville, and as he would say, as Phil would say, Holtville slap-out area. One of our WSFE, uh, WSFA Storm Team weather watchers. I'll get the station name right. Here's a look at our tower cam this evening on a clear night in downtown Montgomery with temperature of 57 degrees and winds out of the north at 5, humidity at 75%. Dew point now at 49, barometer on the way up at 29.99 inches. Last night, the only thing we got out of that rain system was one one-hundredth of an inch of rain out of Dandy Field. Our weather watches mostly had under a quarter of an inch, except for uh, Joe Gilchrist and Troy had eight-tenths of an inch. Today's high temperature in Montgomery was 71. Our low this morning was 55 and the record high on this date, 92 in 1948, record low 44 1963. This is what we're seeing tonight on the satellite and radar put together. The rain that we had from that system last night moved on to the northeast into the middle Atlantic coastal region. They're getting some good steady rains there today. They also had a few showers down in South Florida today. Even the Braves Marlin games had a few uh, drops of rain at one point. This is the new rain system coming together in the center of the nation. Unfortunately, as this moves east, it looks like it's going to dry out a little bit, on, at least on the southern end of it, before it gets to Alabama. So in other words, the, most of the rain is going to be going into the Ohio Valley and eventually into the Great Lakes and the Northeast. So we're, we may get gypped again on this next one. You can see the clouds that started the, uh, the day here today, and then the clouds kind of dissipated as the afternoon went on and sunshine, bright sunshine came through. Uh, tomorrow it looks like total sunshine for the most part. There'll be some high clouds coming in. We have a cool northwesterly flow here. It's not going to last for long because this little bend in the wind like this will be changing radically as the weekend gets here and another dome of high pressure builds. The problem with these domes of high pressure 
Well, well, there's a couple of them. One of them is that these uh, wet weather systems that come out of the plains tend to dry out as they come into our region of the country. And so it looks like our rain chances over the weekend are not looking very good. On the other hand, summer comes back into our forecast with high temperatures back into the 80s Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and increasing humidity Saturday and Sunday. So it will feel more and more like it's June by the time the weekend gets here. Look at the latest weather map tonight, and you can see this cool high-pressure area currently in Missouri. And that slides on to the southeast tomorrow. We have another nice sunny day here after a cool start, a nice warm-up. A few showers, we hope, on Thursday. I wouldn't get too excited about it. It doesn't look wet. And then Friday, we get into drier air back behind this latest frontal system as we get ready for a warm, dry weekend around here. And a look at low temperatures tonight. This map looks like it's about two months old because we're seeing temperatures uh, cooler than we ought to see this time of the year. 40s all the way down into South Alabama, 30s up in the Appalachian chain. And the specific lows look like you know, perhaps 42 around Huntsville, 46 Montgomery, 52 in the Dothan area. There's that record we were talking about earlier. 46 is the record for tomorrow morning in Montgomery, and that is a long-standing record, almost 120 years old, 1876. We could perhaps tie it. Who knows? Maybe break it. Temperatures now from 50 at Birmingham to uh, 60 degrees at Dothan and at Fort Walton Beach. And the forecast on this uh, Tuesday night, clear and unseasonably cold, low 46. For tomorrow, mostly sunny and warmer. East winds at 10 to 15. 76 is your high temperature. Not quite as cool tomorrow night, down to 53 for a low. And the outlook for Thursday, only a 20% chance of showers, perhaps even a thunderstorm. And Thursday's high, very close to 80. Looking ahead for you, Friday looks like uh, dry weather. And Saturday and Sunday, increasingly warmer as we get into summer-like weather. Summer-like weather. Good transition to this. Listen, coming up next in tonight's Your Health segment, the danger signs of a potentially deadly form of skin cancer and how the sun brings it on. My kid brother always vowed I'll never get married. Guess what? Hitched with no place to go. Money was tight, so they planned on getting an apartment. I told him, don't throw your money away. Invest in a manufactured home. It'll be a great tax deduction, and you'll be building equity in your own home. Well, they were convinced. They're the proud owners of a new manufactured home. And one year later, they're the proud parents of twins. Time for a multi-section. Manufactured homes, a better way of life. Enter the race where you take the lead. The Big B Drugs NASCAR Victory Lane Game. Pick up your free Big B NASCAR Scratch and Win game card at any Big B location to win over $7 million in cash or prizes. And while you're at Big B, look for Scott's Baby Fresh Baby Wipes. Baby Fresh Wipes come in a convenient 100-count refill package. And they're alcohol-free and hypoallergenic for your baby's sensitive skin. Play the game and win. The Big B NASCAR Victory Lane Game. The fast lane to savings at Big B Drugs. Sometimes we get plants that aren't quite good enough to sell. We're always looking for new ways to keep the kids busy. Question was, what to do with these plants? Of course, they love to play in the dirt. Then Louis said, let's give them to the YMCA daycare center. It's a great idea. We're able to dress up the center. We were able to do something positive with plants we won't sell. And we taught the children some good lessons about the environment. What kind of flower is that? It's a yellow one. Everyone likes the warm, healthy glow of a good suntan, but more and more Americans are finding out too much sun can be deadly. Doctors are seeing lots of cases of melanoma, a potentially deadly form of cancer. Tonight, health reporter Ashley Anderson tells you about the danger signs of melanoma. A new survey shows that most Americans don't know the warning signs of melanoma. And only about a third of those asked know what melanoma is. Knowing what to look for is important. Key word is change, something that's different than it was. Melanoma is one of the most deadly kinds of skin cancer, but it is curable if detected and treated early. We're very concerned about public health, about the issue of melanoma increase, and the fact that we're not uh, seeing patients early enough uh, with uh, melanoma. Uh, we find this as uh, a real need to teach self-examination. Self-examination means looking for changes in the size, color, texture, or shape of a mole, development of a new mole, or any other unusual changes in the skin. To see everywhere, people are urged to use a handheld mirror. Nearly 35,000 Americans are expected to be diagnosed with melanoma this year, but finding it early 
can stop it in its tracks. I was very, very lucky that the melanoma was in the very earliest stages, so therefore I didn't need any chemotherapy nor radiation. Early diagnosis and treatment can mean preventing the more than 7,000 melanoma deaths expected this year in the United States. With your help, I'm Ashley Anderson. Of course, the best advice is to have as little skin exposure as possible, and dark-skinned people can have skin damage, just as light-skinned people can. I have that problem. I have the light skin. And uh, it's it's nothing to fool around with, folks. No. You need to really take it seriously. And uh, hey, the older you get, the more you appreciate good hats and mm. with big wide them. brims, let me tell you. Lots of sunblock. Well, let's see. Uh, we got Spence McCracken making a big move. Yeah, and we have a strange thing happening in Detroit tonight. Uh, a lot of problems with the fans at Tiger Stadium. In fact, they were totally out of control. We'll have that story for you in the sports. The options Carol Larson added to her Alpha Auto Insurance. Which one do you think she values the most? Lost income protection? Rental car reimbursement? Coverage for death, dismemberment, or loss of sight? No, tonight Carol is glad she added the emergency road service option. Call Alpha to insure your car and be sure to add these low-cost options. Because peace of mind shouldn't be an option. I hate bugs. Roaches, I'm petrified with them. Sears Pest Control's seven-step treatment will rid your home of bugs for a full year. Once a year is convenient, effective. Sears comes one time, does their job, and that's the end of it. The technician went everywhere. Very thorough. There were no fumes, no odors, no mess. Four years, four visits, no bugs. For a free inspection, call Sears Pest Control today. Sears is a good thing. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. Mm. This is dull. Doesn't have to be. And now, the starting lineup. Whoa. That groom from Texas, Billy Clyde Humphrey. And at Pride, a 5'6 debutante from Alabama, Nell Peterson. The Humphrey wedding brought to you by Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. The vows are up. I do. I do. And they're good. Whoa, Nelly. That was beautiful, man. The colonial spirit at your hometown colonial bank. The colonial can-do spirit is our way of saying thanks. Strong enough to deliver the perfect size to care. Hey, catch the colonial spirit. The colonial can-do spirit is everywhere. We can do colonial bank. We can do. Detroit's home opener was rowdy. Cleveland center fielder Kenny Lofton said he feared for his safety. The Indians' general manager called the American League office to demand protection for his players. Tiger president John McHale Jr. considered calling the game off at one point. They booed, they threw things, they ran onto the field. Security removed at least 20 fans from the playing area. Lofton says whiskey bottles, baseballs, and a large metal napkin dispenser were thrown at him from the bleachers. He says he never played in worse conditions. McHale calls it embarrassing and disturbing. Cleveland manager Mike Hargrove blames liquor, not the strike, for the fans' reaction. Cleveland batters riddle the Tiger pitching. Jim Tomei and Paul Sorrento hit three-run homers. Carlos Baerga and Manny Ramirez also homered for the Indians. In the National League, the first Japanese native to play in the big leagues in 30 years made an impressive debut. Hideo Nomo started for the Dodgers, pitched five scoreless innings. He walked four, but he struck out seven and allowed just one hit. Now here's the kicker. The game went 15 innings. The Dodgers scored three at the top of the 15th, but the Giants came back with four in the bottom of the inning to win it 4-3. At Joe Robbie in Miami, the Braves and the Marlins went to the fifth inning scoreless. Then with the bases loaded, Marquise Grissom delivered the big hit, driving in two. In the sixth, Mark Lemke continued to show that sneaky power at the plate, driving one off the left field wall. David Justice scored all the way from first. That made it Atlanta 3-0. Greg Maddox pitched hitless into the sixth. Tired a bit then. The Marlins got a run off him. 
Jeff Conine drove it in, but the bullpen shut them out for the rest of the way. Javier Lopez put it away in the eighth. A bases loaded hit to the opposite field. That scored three runs. Atlanta goes five and one on the year. Same two teams at it again tomorrow night in South Florida. Other finals in the National League, Pittsburgh edge the Cardinals. Philadelphia hand Cincinnati their sixth straight loss. They have yet to win. It's the Reds' worst start in history. American League Finals, Toronto came back to beat the White Sox. Kansas City edged Minnesota 4-3. And they are happy in New England. Boston blasts the Yankees tonight by a score of 8-0. It was the end of the line for the Atlanta Hawks tonight. The Indiana Pacers, Reggie Miller leading the way with 32. With the Hawks, 25. Uh, with the Hawks soundly, they made a 25 to run to nine run in the second half to pull it out. Miller had the three point shot going during that uh, surge. He scored 12 of his points during the big run. Mookie Blaylock, 20 for the losing Hawks. So the Pacers eliminate the Hawks for the second straight year. 105 89 tonight's game, a three game sweep. In that best of five. At Chicago, the Bulls dumped the Charlotte Hornets 103-80 to take a 2-1 lead in that uh, uh, best of five first rounder. Alabama State held its annual all-sports banquet tonight to honor its student athletes. Sean Clark was at the Joe Reed Academy. Alabama State University has been through a lot of turmoil lately with the NCAA. Tonight, they put all that aside for their annual athletics award banquet. The NCAA thing has to do with some things that happened a long time ago, and what we're doing tonight is uh, uh, taking care of the business of what's happening now and looking forward to the future of the university. I, I don't think that there's any allegation from the NCAA that there's anything wrong right now, and we plan to keep it that way. Tonight's banquet is mixed with the good and bad, the recognition of athletes, many of whom are seniors. I come here with a mix of motion. It's kind of like seeing your, your mother-in-law drive off the cliff in your brand new Cadillac. You, you don't mind seeing her going, but you, you wish you wouldn't go in your Cadillac. So I, I come here tonight with that kind of feeling, because some of these guys are seniors and have, have been here with us for four years, and we certainly hope that the rest of their life is as good as they have been here with us. And, and, and then there are others who will be coming back. So you're kind of in between. But you got to have these kind of nights to recognize these fine athletes that we have here. Reporting from Alabama State University, Sean Clark, WSFA Sports 12. Mark Axt won the Lockhart Award, which is the highest honor a student athlete can win at Alabama State. Oh, joke, but it's still funny. Yeah, congratulations to Mark. Thanks. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Did you ever notice how sometimes the best way to relate to your kids is to become one yourself? Yamaha Wave Runners. Sure, they're built for reliability and performance, but more importantly, they're built for the kid in all of us. See all the new Yamaha Wave Runners at Ward's Yamaha, 231 Bypass Troy. Yamaha, fun that won't quit. Pelicaville is a small rural town um, just outside of Buffalo and Niagara Falls. We have the kind of product that uh, Walmart could have bought anywhere. I believe Walmart was very impressed with the fact that we could compete and keep the jobs here in America. We're competing head on with uh, foreign competition. Being a vendor to Walmart has given us the opportunity to be a world class manufacturer using our small hometown team. But we're all in for the same goal. We want our jobs, we want them here. Uh, keep it in America and we'll keep working. The art of medicine is the art of survival, applying technology to the challenges of nature. Cardiologists at the Heart Institute are following that path with an ingenious device called a stent. Delivered through a catheter to an obstructed artery, it can be opened to make a simple supporting framework and help get the blood flowing again. At the Heart Institute of Montgomery Regional Medical Center, part of the Columbia Healthcare System, the WSFA law line came to a conclusion just more than an hour ago, and tonight 613 of you called in for free legal advice. So what kind of calls did the lawyers answer? Questions range from divorce, common law separation, small claims, and wills, just to mention a few. And as always, a sincere thanks to the Montgomery County Bar Association's young lawyers and for our good friends at South Trust Bank for allowing us to use their facilities and, of course, their phones. 
Uh, As the nation continues to get over the shock of the Oklahoma City bombing, a country music singer is doing his part to help with the healing. Teddy Bears in Oklahoma is the title of a song written and performed by Ray Hood. Now, the song was rushed into production to capture the emotional feeling generated by the bombing in Oklahoma City. The record should go on sale within a couple of weeks. Proceeds from the sale uh, will go to Oklahoma after the production costs are paid. The silence was shattered. There was terror in the heartland. And anything that folks can do for them, more power to sure them. Sure thing. Here's your wake-up weather forecast, by the way. First thing in the morning, sunny and cool, 48 degrees at 7 o'clock. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great night. The Tonight Show is next. From the NBC studios in Burbank.